Hey guys, just before the video starts, a quick reminder that due to the changes to the YouTube Partnership Program, your subscriptions are going to be even more important than before. So if you appreciate or like the content, please subscribe to the channel. The faster we hit the 1000 subscribers, the faster I'll be able to deliver co continuous content to you guys. So now, let's move on to the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today we're going to be looking at another cooler review and it's actually going to be a pretty interesting one today because we're going to look back at one of the classic coolers, the Arctic Freezer 7 Pro. This cooler has been around I would say for at least five to ten years, okay? And it's one of the staples in the cooling industry. Some people regard it as one of the best budget options you can get to cool your system. And that's what we're going to test today. How does it stack up to today's more modern coolers? Now Arctic has revamped most of their series and we'll look at those new coolers later on. But I wanted to start with the Freezer 7 Pro because it's still one of the best sold coolers on Amazon and on Newegg as well. And I wanted to see if it has any business staying as one of the best sold coolers or if with the coolers we've compared so far there are better options at better prices. So keep tuned and let's take a look first of all at the description of the cooler. The Arctic Freezer 7 Pro has a standard tower cooler design. It comes equipped with three copper heat pipes of six millimeters thickness. It also comes with a PWM controlled fan that is 92 millimeters in diameter and has a maximum RPM of 2200. Arctic says that the cooler is good for cooling up to 150 watts capacity and the dimensions on the cooler are 127 millimeters high by 108 millimeters wide and 96 millimeters deep. It is important to note, however, that the, since the fan is a custom design, you won't be able to mount any different uh, fan than the stock one that comes with it because the, there is no mounting mechanism. You can always fabricate one, but out of the box, you're stuck with the fan that's been provided by Arctic. For socket compatibility, it's universally compatible with all modern sockets, all the way up to AM4 and Ryzen, straight out of the box. So you don't need anything special, you're good to go on any modern socket. Now let's take a look and see what the results get. So now that we know what the cooler has to offer, as usual we're going to take a look at the performance that it gave off. Now as usual, just a quick re repeat of my methodology. All my CPUs are tested on the same Ryzen 3 1200 test bench system. It's overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz using 1.3 volts. I also use the exact same thermal paste on all coolers. So even if the cooler came with uh, applied thermal paste, I'll take it off and I'll apply Arctic MX4 myself to make sure that we're comparing on the exact same basis. And yes, thermal paste makes a difference. And if you guys are interested, you can take a look at my channel where we've tested over 12 different types of thermal paste. There are small differences between different brands. Now, if we take a look at the Arctic uh, 7 Pro, basically, um, let's start with the temperature results. So if we take a look at the chart that should be on the screen right now, unfortunately the Arctic 7 Pro was not one of the strong competitors in the cooling performance. If you look at the graph as well, as indicated, all fan speeds are locked at 100%, so unless it's specified. So we are really comparing the overall maximum performance you can get out of these coolers. So as you can see, unfortunately, the Arctic 7 Pro uh, falls behind, I would say, most of the coolers in the same price range and same fan size or whatnot. Uh, so unfortunately, performance-wise, it wasn't too strong of a competitor. Now, if we go on to look at noise performance for the Arctic 7 uh, Freezer 7 Pro, uh, once again, the noise performance was once again nothing to write home about. It, we, at 46 decibels, it wasn't the noisiest cooler we've tested, but it was far from the quietest. And with the lack in performance in cooling capacity, uh, you know, the being above average, uh, above average meaning that the noise being above the average meaning bad, uh, can't really be forgiven for this cooler because overall uh, it would have had to have a really incredible noise performance to forgive the cooling performance on it. 
So overall, what does this mean for the Arctic 7 Pro? Well, we've seen the numbers. It's not a bad cooler in any sense, meaning that uh, it's gonna be do better than your stock coolers and even the stock Ryzen coolers for any CPU you're gonna be using. But at the same time, it's an old design, it's an old cooler, and unfortunately it hasn't kept up with the times with what's offered on the market today. If you look at the charts, you'll see the Gamax 400, you'll see the contact um, the, the contact by thermal take the, uh, all these coolers are really in the same price bracket I got my Ar Arctic freezer 7 Pro brand new for 30 bucks the Gamax 400 is generally $25 and the contact 12 is between 25 and 30 so once again if you're spending the exact same money and you can get extra performance and better noise uh, the Arctic 7 freezer 7 Pro just really doesn't keep up and this is a personal perspective by myself, but the fan design I find is, you know, it's dated. It doesn't look as nice as some other coolers out on the market for the same price. It makes it look, in my opinion, like a cheaper cooler than what it is. But at the same time, uh, maybe you like the design. It has was sort of a old school look to it. And However, the last point I would like to make is the fact that this fan uh, mounting mechanism cannot be swapped easily is really disappointing on myself because if you've ever had coolers fail on you, the one thing that will fail about a, you know, a heatsink will be the fan. And if you don't want to go and buy a whole other heatsink and you do have fans lying around that have decent performance, sometimes you can just swap the a standard, you know, 92 millimeter or 120 millimeter, depending on the size of your heatsink fan in and out. Well, this isn't true for the Arctic 7 Pro. I mean, you can jerry rig something with like tie wraps or, or anything, but you won't be able to use the stock mounting mechanism because basically it really is locked to the fan, it's built into the fan, if you can you know, see it right here. So overall, uh, I was really glad to test the Arctic Freezer 7 Pro because it's one of the best sold coolers on Amazon and Newegg, like I said earlier. And I was really wondering if it really still stood the test of time and was still as good as its sales are. Uh, once again, I'm iterating, it's not a bad purchase, but so far I really can't recommend it because there are better options out there. Check any of the graphs you'll see. Among my favorite are the Gamax 400 and the Thermal Take Contact 12. So as usual, I hope you guys really appreciated this video. Leave any questions, comments, uh, anything you would like to do with me to do better in the comment section down below. As usual, your likes and your subscribes are really important to help the channel growing. We're finally above 500 uh, subscriptions and we're gonna hit that 1,000 anytime, you know, as soon as possible. So thanks again and see you guys in my next video.